I think in this country, we have been held back by our history of racial inequality. You say the word race in America and people get nervous. You say the word racial justice and people start looking for the nearest exit. We've been burdened by this legacy, all of us, and the costs are immeasurable. You're six times more likely to go to prison for committing the same offense if you're a black man versus a white man. We have these horrific disparities when it comes to sentencing, from the death penalty to the lowest level drug crimes. In 1989, about 25% of the people executed in the United States were executed in the state of Alabama. We had dozens of people on death row who did not have legal representation. There were no institutions providing legal services to condemn people. If you don't have a right to counsel, and you don't have any money, and you're on death row, you're going to be executed. It's stunning that a country that's so dedicated to incarceration as a solution for its problems knows so little about who we lock up, why, and for how long. The people on death row had no help, had no assistance. If we didn't work on the cases, no one was going to work on the cases. In the late 80s, the Equal Justice Initiative was created as an organization to help people on death row. Over time, being exposed to a lot of other injustices in the criminal justice system led us to branch out and try to create programs and initiatives to confront the other problems outside of the death penalty context. Imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole isn't a life sentence, it's a death sentence. It's a death in prison sentence. We've done a lot of work for people who've been sentenced to die in prison, people whose convictions and sentences have not been reliably imposed. The United States is the only country in the world that condemns children to die in prison, some as young as 13 years of age. We've seen real progress. Eight years ago, we were executing children in the United States. And in 2005, the U.S. Supreme Court banned the execution of children. In 2010, we were able to persuade the court to ban life imprisonment without parole for children convicted of non-homicides. And now the court has banned these mandatory death in prison sentences for all children. We started a project on race and poverty where we're looking at the legacy of uh, racial inequality and injustice in America. We partner with schools, other advocacy groups and organizations who are all interested in education around these issues of race and poverty. We try to organize people to act on the injustice, speak out on these issues, and raise awareness. It's too easy to say that something is complicated, it's difficult, it's been that way forever, and tolerate it. We can create a more just society, but it doesn't happen by itself. It is not inevitable. All of this time, I kept wondering, how did I get where I'm at? How did I end up on death row for a crime that I didn't commit? Hinton lived more than half his life inside a cage, a five by seven cell. And so when Mr. Stevenson came, for the first time, I felt that somebody was working on my behalf that believed in me. Just a few weeks ago, the state of Alabama dropped the case after a new look at the evidence could not match the bullets to the gun and Hinton was released. The question of the death penalty for me has never been do people deserve to die for the crimes they commit? The question is do we deserve to kill? I'm really proud of the fact that we've had 115 people on death row get removed from death row after we were able to prove wrongful convictions or unfair sentences. And we've now seen eight states have repealed the death penalty in the last eight years. That's largely what we've been doing. Uh, we've been standing when people said sit down on behalf of the condemned and the incarcerated and the wrongly accused. We've been speaking with other people who've been saying be quiet when it comes to our history of racial inequality, but the fruits of that is, I think, a more hopeful society, a society a little bit closer to ending mass incarceration, to ending the death penalty, to ending the abuse of children in our criminal justice system, and maybe to turning the corner on our legacy of racial inequality and oppression.